All right, here we go. So, in the past, I think maybe earlier this earlier this year, if not late last year, I did a OTP sixteen finances explained video. It didn't really get much exposure. I think it had like maybe five hundred views. And in the past, I think I've done either OTP thirteen or fourteen finances, and that got like two thousand plus views. So, so obviously the demand was there for that video. So anyways, I wanted to redo it because not much has changed with the accounting and how it all works, but and like the finances and all that stuff. But I didn't like the way that I went about the video just because there were some awkward long pauses in there and I'll probably end up just deleting that video and having this one go up in its place anyways. But I want to do a quick video on the finances and accounting in OTP 17 and we will talk about everything that goes on in the finances and the accounting pages here so to begin it'll be money for free agents is the total money available right here okay something that's very cool is you can click these little arrows right here and you can change the drop down boxes to whatever you want it even shows you your rule five eligible players, which is pretty cool, in my in my opinion. So, anyways, the pretty much the overview snapshot is in the finances page. It's the also it's also the only page that you can find the market size, fan loyalty, fan interest, all that information. So, that is very important. But the nitty gritty is everything that goes on in the accounting page right here. This breaks everything down for you and we're gonna go through and we'll just go down the list and talk about everything and then we'll pretty much talk about how it changes in each column so to begin your last this last year's page and it shows you your budget what it was and the budget includes your expenses for players staff scouting draft player development the international amateurs that are free agents in like July 1st, I think, or August 1st, sometime around then. And then your miscellaneous player expenses, which is just contracts that you are eating the money for. Okay, so to begin, <clears throat> we have your previous balance, which is equal, directly equal to the total balance of the previous season. So we can't see what 2014 looked like because it's not on here. But for 2016, you can see that the previous balance, 18 million, is the exact same as the total balance from the end of the previous season. Okay, now this will this number right here will subtract or be added by revenue sharing and cash from the owner. Revenue sharing is luxury tax. So if your team applies in the luxury tax field, then you will gain or lose money the Orioles did not so therefore they lose no money and then the cash from the owner the owner will decide upon your budget and he will take your starting balance money or he'll give you money if you're in the negative sometimes not every owner is the same and it really just depends on the type of owner and then all that matters is that that money plus whatever this equation is revenue sharing cash from owner will give you your starting balance and your starting balance is your cash now cash can be seen right here and it's very important because you can go over your budget with cash alright so you can see here we have a budget room of 25 million essentially and then you add in the 10 million from cash and that's how we get the amount of money that we can spend on free agents which is 35 million rounded so Let's break it down all the revenue. So with our revenue, we have the gate revenue and season ticket revenue. Obviously, this is season ticket people. They are locked in the first day of spring training, I think. So like spring on the first day of spring training, once you get out of the preseason, that number's set. Can't change those, and it's based on whatever your ticket prices were set to at the time. You can change the ticket prices now. However, it was not an option in 16, it is now, so you now have season tickets that are in place, and I think it's a really cool system. So playoff revenue is self-explanatory. Media revenue is important to cover. So media revenue is split between national and local media revenue. So your market size is directly affecting the two. Now it depends on what your financial settings are. So you can see here, 
in this league, which is just the quick start standard MLB league, the national media contract is fixed for every single team at $45 million. So no matter what, it is always going to be $45 million. Okay. Then there's a local media contract, which is no matter what, based on your market size. So for the Orioles, it's going to be a little bit more than $45 million because the baseline is $45 million, but the Orioles have a rather big market size. So if you go to like commissioner mode, you can see national media contract $45 million, local media contract $55 million. So the baseline is $45 million, but because we have a rather big market size, we are above the baseline and they have a $55 million local media contract. And that is your media revenue. That is given to you on day one of the off season, no matter what, every single season. Okay. Now it, can, it changes for every single team. So the Orioles have a rather big market, but the Yankees have an astronomical market. So when you look at their media revenue, it's $140 million. And if you go to their finances, you can see the local media contract is $95 million. And that is where the difference comes in your market size. Okay, so let's go back to the Orioles, actually. So here we go. Merchandising revenue. This is, I think, mostly affected by fan loyalty. Okay, so you can see here they have good loyalty. Fan interest as well. So I think it's most, the biggest factor, I think, is loyalty, then interest, and then, of course, market size. So all three of those factors contribute to give you, you know, your, your merchandising revenue, but I think the biggest one is loyalty. So moving on, you have all those numbers added up, gives you your, rev your revenue subtotal. Now you go to your expenses. You can see here this is all of your player expenses, staff expenses, scouting expenses, draft expenses, player development, and something that you can change in 17 is if you go from front office to player development tab right here as such, you can change all of your budgeted amounts of money for each subject. So player development budget, that can change here. Your draft budget can also be set, and then your international amateur free agent budget, which is just the free agents that are like 16, 17 years old that you sign on July 1st. So you can change the amount that is in your budget, which will affect the amount of money you can spend, okay? However, if you, for the draft or for the international amateur free agents, if you go over that amount, then it comes directly out of cash. So if you have no cash, as in your owner took all of it, or they took more than you would like, and say you budgeted four million for the draft. So if we go here and see that we've only budgeted four million for the draft, but we need at least seven million to sign players. If we only had two million in cash as opposed to ten million, then we would only have six million available to sign the players at most. And we, if we needed seven, then we would not be able to sign a certain player or two, whatever the case may be. Just know that if you have a certain budget and you don't have the amount to cover it in cash then you will lose out and the same thing goes with international amateur free agents and let's move on to the next topic so everything here gets totaled up to expenses miscellaneous player expenses is actually going to be just the amount of contracts that you're eating so if you cut a player that has 10 million dollars left on his contract and that is two years left, then you will have to pay the remaining amount for that year and the full amount next year. So if it's a $20 million contract and it's halfway through the season, 81 games into the season, you only owe him $10 million and you cut him, then you have $10 million for this year and then $20 million for next year, and that will be displayed from all the way pretty much here and here or however the length, long the length of the contract is. That is where all of the expenses will be shown for buyouts in team options and player options or vesting options. Well, no, I don't think vesting options has any buyouts on it. But anyways, player options and team options will be showed here. Then there's anything that you just outright cut and things of that nature are all miscellaneous player expenses. So finally, moving down, you have cash from trades, which is obvious, self-explanatory, and this gives you your season profit or loss, but obviously we're profiting because this is green, and if it were red, it would be a loss. So you take your starting balance, you add the profit or loss, and that'll give you your total balance. And then the total balance is your 
a previous balance right here then you take whatever cash from the owner decides to take or give you that gives you your starting balance and that is the amount of money that you have directly for cash okay and the year to date the only difference between budget year to date and projected so projected will change depending on if you make a trade you sign a new player things like that budgeted i'm pretty sure stays stagnant depending on what the values were on the first day of the season or at the end of the preseason something of that nature either way this is dynamic that will change this is the year to date so players get paid so i don't know if it's monthly weekly or even daily but they do get paid so if you have a 20 million dollar contract and you're halfway through the season 81 games in and you decide that you don't want to pay him or you know cut him you want to cut him then you still owe him 10 million or if you trade him then someone else uh, will have to pay the 10 million dollar contract for the rest of that season okay so that is the year to date and all of this will obviously change the budget is almost always going to be the exact same as your last year and then the projected will change based on how the season goes and what your ticket prices are fan interest loyalty how your record is things of that nature that'll constantly change one thing though that is almost for certain is the budget for your next year so at this point in the season it's april 1st okay you can see here it's april 1st but when you're close to the end of the season like august pretty much whatever this number says is what goes this is a very good indicator of what your budget will look like for the next season. So if you have a good total balance and a good season profit, you'll likely have an increase in budget. And of course, this is all arbitrary and it depends on the owner and things of that nature. But if this number in August or September shows you whatever that is, that is most likely going to be like 95% chance very very rarely is it not that exact number at that point in the season so you can prepare yourself to have that budget that way you are not surprised when the off season comes and the owner gives you a cut or increase in budget you won't be surprised because you will have seen it here and this is how it all works so we've covered all of the expenses and the budgeting and that is pretty much it so I believe there's nothing left to cover here. And these numbers in 2018 are all that it's not a very good indicator at all. I wouldn't put too much weight into that at all. This is more accurate, but again, if it's on April 1st, I wouldn't put too much weight into it. I would definitely put a lot of weight at the end of the season when it's like August and September. Then you that'll give you a better indicator of what all these numbers will be and what your season profit loss and balances will be. But for the most part, all of this is just projections and something that I do want to say though is that player expenses and staff expenses, this takes your contracts but it also factors in options like player options and teams op team options or opt-outs. So it assumes that you are going to be liable for the contract and that they will not opt out of their contract. So if it's a team option, it's assuming that you will accept that team option so it's not entirely accurate because it assumes that you're always going to have that contract okay so the player expenses can change and therefore your expense uh, total can change and you might end up with more of a profit than you anticipated or that the game projected only because it assumes you will always accept the contract so just know that these figures are not finite and you will definitely have the chance to change them if you have options or player opt-outs in their uh, contracts. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys learned a few things and let me know what you think of this video and if it was helpful. Thanks.